Good morning, and I'm delighted to have with me this morning in our segment where we have an industry expert, Mehul Sangani, and he is the president and founder of Opto Consulting. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mehul. You actually have something that I think our audience would love to hear about. Many, many things. Um, you're very entrepreneurial, uh, so tell us a little bit about your background, because you did go to, you have formal education, but it was something in uh, your life that made you such, so do share with our audience. Yeah. Your hard work is you actually recently won an engagement from the FBI, and he saved 31 million for the FBI in cost savings. So if you'd love to share with our audience, what was it that you were doing and what is it that Octo Consulting does that saved the FBI that much money? Because that's what the government is looking for from all of our contractors. How can you save their agencies money? Yeah. It was all basically technologically driven then. Yeah, yeah, I think it was really a combination of advice. Well, that's very creative and it's not what you learned from your parents' motel because I don't think that was the way that operated and you right. can't. Somebody actually has to make those beds. Yeah, Somebody absolutely. physically, you can't go back on that person. But yeah, thank you. For any small businesses watching, you have faced that paradox, the chicken and egg paradox. You need to have past performance, you need to have a phenomenal track record to win a contract, but what do you do when you don't have that and you're starting out as an entrepreneur? So I have to say that Mahul did that, been there, done that. So what is it that you did initially to win your first large contract? Because unlike a lot of people, you came out of the gate and won something really very big. Yeah, I certainly affords you the opportunity to be able to work direct with customers where other larger competitors or smaller competitors you know, may not be afforded that same opportunity. They haven't done that, yes. And they, and they probably don't have in their bag of um, uh, tools, their portfolio, as many experiences that you had. Yeah, yeah I think that's the, those differences. And, and executed. You know, executed, yeah, yeah, obviously. Yes, yeah. You know, I think that's, that's, the, that's one of the major challenges for any small business. So, so you've had your challenges. You have obviously a lot of conviction. I can tell that. Our audience can tell that. But has there ever been a time... Mehul, where you said, you know, I've made a mistake, I wish I hadn't done this. Yeah, well, I think, Emily... And, and you've worked with some big companies, Booz yeah, and SAC, some I, I great, did. I had a chance great to, firms. I had a chance to work in the Silicon Valley, learned a lot there, and Booz Allen and Gartner, and some, some, some great firms here in the area. Uh, Absolutely. Supportive. I hear a lot of like, the successful men have wives that are very supportive. Yeah. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, you know, she's, she's definitely been, you know, my driving force behind behind me. I would not have been able to accomplish anything that I, I did without, uh, without her support. That's wonderful. Shout out to my Hill's wife. That's Thank right. you. Yeah. We've heard from both large contractors and small contractors sort of conflicting opinions as to whether this current milieu is really tough on the big guys or really tough on the smaller companies. What do you say, Mahal? Well, certainly large businesses. Because of all the compliance issues surrounding that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and in order to, to, to deliver an effective proposal, you know, typically uh, these days requires a six-figure investment, mm -hmm. uh, not only in pulling together the actual content, but in... And right. these are things, uh, approaches that small businesses, six-figure investments, buying their way onto contracts, offering uh, rate cards that are below cost. Uh, you know, Can't these are things. to do. Absolutely. There aren't the margins there, no. Absolutely. No. And so I don't know. And we've heard, actually, that the irony of it is some of the things that have been enacted recently are just more regulations to regulate something where it's less regulations that are needed. Yeah. yeah for I, the small I, guys, anyway. I yeah. don't know if I'm, and if you're not careful, you could end up uh, in very hot water if you're not cognizant of all the various compliance and lose the right entire now. investment absolutely yeah. secret to our frequent viewers that the big contract vehicles the GWACs IDAQs and Macs that are frequently used now and in ever-increasing numbers oftentimes government contractors don't win the follow-on work I have with me today Mayhall and Mayhall has been very successful however in winning follow-on work so Mayhall could you share with our audience what are some of your tips as to how you have been able to uh, get all that follow-on work you had the hunting license as it's called right yeah so I um, you were a subcontractor on many of those kind of contracts and now of course you're in the position of being a prime right so looking at those follow-on contracts and winning more work you're looking now to a certain degree for teaming partners and to have subs come on board with you and you want to continue to win the work what are you looking for our audience loves to hear you know what uh, somebody on the show wants a niche that you may perhaps you don't have and you don't offer in your whole portfolio absolutely and that yeah. was what really what uh, allowed us to be successful as a subcontractor and in turn that's what we're looking for uh, in our subcontracting teammates and today. they fit with your very good uh, customer approach absolutely yeah, in your culture absolutely one of our frequent viewers knows that we always ask about the keys to winning the force behind government contracting weekly is key solutions that provide strategy capture and proposal support to those government contractors that really want to win a contract. Uh, as you know, Mayhul is with me this morning because he's been very successful, particularly right out of the gate of winning a contract. 
could you share with our audience what do you think the keys to winning are, and particularly your first really large significant contract? Yeah, I think as I like to say is that you know our assets are really between the ears of our people, uh -huh. and uh, I think we've really strived hard to ensure the results too. Well, now, and every company in the marketplace wants to hire the best and the brightest. How do you attract the best and the brightest? So we, we take on... We haven't heard that before. Yeah, yeah so, uh, but I think it really just comes down to having a family-centric uh, atmosphere. I think um, we really have uh, two big rules. Uh, do you have a sign outside, or do you ever advertise no jerks need apply? No. Yeah, I, you know, honestly, I do. Uh, actually, we use a different word. We don't use jerks. No, 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 I didn't think so. Right, right, right. <laughs> but absolutely, I think, uh, you know, nothing could be more toxic to a small firm environment yeah. than, than having... A that apple rots the barrel. Absolutely. Yeah, the barrel. It's great to hear such as prescriptive and specific advice to our audience. So thank you very much, Mehul, for joining us this morning. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. There's no better benchmark of being a successful business than that really first big win. Recently, I sat down with Ken Schutz, a senior